Hi and welcome to a session on Excel. We're going to run through the different parts of Excel, how Excel works, do some basic formatting and some basic formulas, and go over a couple of exercises and get you up to speed to, an un to a level where you can understand and do basic spreadsheeting by yourself. So let's have a look at Excel. So you can see by this screenshot, we've got along the top here, we've got a bunch of tabs. And as we click on those, this ribbon here will change. We've also got a bunch of tabs down the bottom, which are different spreadsheets, and we're going to be going through all these different ones um, throughout the day. When we're navigating around, we can use our mouse to go up and down we can use our keyboards and of course we've got over here our two slider bars so that we can navigate around our different spreadsheets we've also got down here the zoom and you can see here this one's quite large at the moment 150 so you guys can comfortably see it in most real world applications you'll find that once you've set it you won't change it but there will be times that you may want to if you're drawing things, for example, in Excel and whatnot, you may want to zoom right in to make sure it's perfect and then zoom back out to where you normally look. Uh, my PC, I usually have set to a different zoom to my laptop. My laptop, for example, I have set at quite a high resolution, so I have it zoomed out so that I'm comfortable using it. Whereas my PC, where I don't watch a lot of stuff on it, I only do work on it, it's not set to quite a so high a setting, so where it's comfortable for me. If we look at the main part of the Excel screen here, you can see that it's divided up into columns with the letters across the top and our rows with our numbers. When we're looking at an individual cell, we're going to address it. In the same way that a letter needs to have a number and a street address on it so that it gets there. So when Nana sends you your $5 for Christmas, they address it to you at 29 Old Road in Olden Town. Right? And that's how it finds you. It knows what street to go to, it knows what number to go to. When we're doing this in Excel, we recognize the address is the column by the row. So this one here, this would be I9. So if we're going to refer to that, we're going to refer to that as I9. We can refer to a range of cells, and when we do that, we refer to them from their top left hand in this case j3 down to their bottom right hand l10 and that way excel knows whether it's a column whether it's a row or whether in like in this case it's three columns and a number of rows in that range when we're doing excel and as we work our way through these exercises the one thing really to learn with excel is never type in a cell address so if we're doing a formula and we're looking at I2, don't type in I2. That's how we make errors. We need to just go in and click on the cell and Excel will put that in for you. And we'll see that in a minute. There's a scary statistic out there that something like 70% of all spreadsheets have an error in them. And I reckon the majority of that is caused by somebody going, oh, I want that cell and that's J and oh, it's J4. And in reality, it's J2. So get into the habit now. Don't write in cell addresses. Always click on the cell to put it in. So let's have a look, see, hey? Let's actually get into Excel. So here it is, that same spreadsheet. So you can see here, exactly the same. First thing we want to do is we want to talk about save and save as. So here I'm going to come up to file and click on the file. If I click on save, it saves all the information that you've just put up. If I click on save as, you can see that it's going to come up and give me some options. So here I am. There's my E drive, which is what most of your USB drives will be. And I'm just going to save it as exercises. So when I click on save, it just automatically saves it and updates the file. When I click on Save As, it gives me the option to change the name and the location. So that's what I'm going to do here now. So there's a minor difference. Once we've saved it, as we update it, just keep hitting Save and it will just update the file. It won't ask you for a new name and a new location unless you want that and then you go File, Save As. 
So here we go, we've got a business plan for Neil Allen. Now, there's some data there. It's not that easy to read. There's no totals in there. We're missing bits of information. It doesn't look very pleasant to the eye. Now, a lot of information being taken in is, if it looks good, it's a lot easier to read, it's a lot easier to grasp the information. So we're gonna change this to something that looks a little bit like this. Much better laid out. All our key information is bold, so it draws your eye to it so you can see it quickly and easily. It looks more professional. It's an easier report to read. So that's what we're gonna go. We're gonna work through now and do this. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make this a little bit wider so we can see that. Now there's a number of ways we can do everything in Excel. I could right click on the cell and I could go to column width and I could do it, but I don't know what the width I need. If you're copying it from the, a different cell and you already know that it needs to be 15 wide, this is the fantastic way of doing it. But if you don't, it's not the best way. We can come up here and you can see when I do that, that that arrow changes from the black arrow to the arrow with the two arrows coming out. And that means if I click and hold that now, I can change the width of that column. Now, usually what, if you can see it, you can set it wherever you want. The shortcut way to do this quickly and easily is to double click on it. So I bring my arrow up here to where the A and the B intersect, double click, and it brings it out to the widest. Now unfortunately, we have done anything with a heading, so it's seeing the heading as the widest at the moment. So I'm just going to undo that. We'll do something with the heading first, and then we'll do that again. So this heading, we want it to be ignored when we do the double click. We want it to span our data. Now I could move this over into here and, and center it and, and try to balance it out, but you're never going to get it exactly in the center. The better way to do it is we highlight all the cells in that top row that we want, and we're going to come up here and click on our merge and center. And that has merged that into one big cell. You can see that now if I click down here, that's one cell. If I click up here, it's one big cell. So now when I come over here and I double click on my column between my A and my B, it says that this is the widest one. It ignores that top one and it sets it for us automatically. All right, so now we've put that Neil Allen's TV sales plan up there. Let's change it a little bit. Let's a little, make it a little bit more bold. Let's make it a little bigger. Let's make it some bright colors to, to draw our attention. So the first thing we want to do is change our font. Now the beauty of the more recent Excels is as we change our fonts, you can see in the background that that font is actually changing with it as well. So it gives you a, a clue as to what it's going to look like. Now Excel comes with lots of fonts and you can add bits and pieces to it as you go through. So there we go. I've changed it to Arial. Same with my font size. As I drag it down, so you can see it, that's obviously too big, we can settle on one that's the right size. And we want to make it a nice color, so we're going to do that. We can make it bold, we can put it in underline, we can make it italics. Now you can see that one's all right. It's even bold, it's a bit too big. You can also see we can up and down our font size there as well. All right, now Times New Roman has gone out of fashion. So let's change all these fonts to a different size. Now we can select it by clicking and holding and selecting the area we want, or we could select it by the whole rows like that. I'm going to change that to Arial again. And because I'm getting old and I can't read things, let's make it at least 12. 
And you can see when I've changed that, now that column isn't wide enough. Okay, so the column doesn't change dynamically. So we'll have to reset that column again by doing that double click again. All right, I've got one month here, January. I'm missing my February, my March, my April, my May, and my June, and I want it to stand out. So I want to make that bold. So I come up here and I click on bold. I want it to be in the middle of my column. So you can see here, my column can be aligned to the left, aligned to the center, or aligned to the right. So here I want to align it to the center. Now I could then type in February, March, April, May, but Excel has a handy little trick. This little box down the bottom here, and you see as that white cross goes up and I'm on top of it, it changes to a black cross. That's called a fill handle. So if I'm on there and I click and I drag that across, Excel is going to take January and it's going to fill it across. And it's going to recognize that, well, that's January. You probably want February, March, April, May, and June there. So there it goes in there automatically for me. Now let's have a look at this area and try to understand how Excel works. Now total income, obviously I want to have a total in there. So I can get my calculator out and I can add the 14,300 and the 1260 and the 2940 and tap it in and then put in the total of 18,500. But that's really not doing anything other than using Excel as nothing more than a word processor. So we want Excel to do our work for us. So if one of these numbers changed, I'd then have to go through and add them up again and then change it. And I'll have to do the same for February and then March and April and so on. That's us doing all the work. We want Excel to do the work. So we could tell Excel to add them all up. Now the easy way to do that when we start a formula, we start up with an equals, and now we want it to add up these three cells. So I'm gonna tell Excel, I want you to take that cell and add it to that cell, and then I'm gonna hit the plus again and add it to this cell. So we're telling Excel what to do. Now you can see Excel is trying to be helpful to us. This B5 here uh, is in blue and B5 is actually in blue. And when we clicked on it, you can see it automatically put that in the formula. B6 is orange and orange B7 is purple. And that tries to let you see what's going on with your formula so you're less likely to make an error. If I hit enter, you can see there it's put in that 1850 for me. Now the beauty also of this is if something changes, so if this changes to 14,500, uh, you can see here that's now changed to 18,700. So it becomes dynamic as we change information. And again, the same way that we use that fill handle to drag and drop, we can use that same fill handle to now push that across to everything else. However, we're only adding up three things. So it's not too hard to say equals, click on the cell plus, click on the cell plus. But imagine if you worked at somewhere like Bunnings and you're adding up all the different stock and you've got 10,000 lines there and you've got to sit there and press equals, click on the cell plus, click on the cell plus, click on the cell 10,000 times. By the time that you got to the end of the day, I'm pretty certain you wouldn't be coming back the next day. So there has to be an easier way to do it, and there is. And if you come and see why up here we have an auto sum button in our ribbon up here. So I'm going to make sure I'm where I want that answer to be. I'm gonna click on auto sum, and you can see Excel has automatically put in the formula equals sum for you. It's guessed at where you want to go. You can see here we've got our blue dancing ant saying, I think this is what you want to add up. Is that correct? Now in this case, it's correct. But if it's not, 
you could change it if I want to add up all of these for example I could just click and drag it or if it was this one I could click and drag it and you can see there it automatically puts that information in there and we've got our blue dancing ants saying this is what we're going to do it won't always be right be right a lot of the time but not always all right so again I'm going to hit enter and that puts that in now again that's dynamic so if I change this back to 15300 you can see that number changes automatically back to 18500 so obviously adding up a lot of information that makes it much much quicker and easier and like I said before we can grab a uh, fill handle and fill that across so at the moment it's a white cross so I clicked on it and that's where I'd be going there's that square we want to grab the mouse will change from a white cross to a black cross when we're above it click and hold it down drag it across and that's automatically put our formula in for us so now we've got our totals in but it doesn't really look like a total there's just four numbers so we want to make this bold maybe we want to put a line in there to make it stand out that that's the total and of course it's a lot easier to read if we've got those thousand common separators in there I'm going to highlight these four rows here and I'm going to come up here for the start with and I'm going to click on comma style and see when I click on comma style it puts the commas in for me unfortunately the default is two decimal places now we don't want that here let me just undo that so what we want to do is we want the comma in there but we don't want the two decimal places so if I come up to number up here and I click on this little drop down box and I get to the number format and it gives me more options so here it says number I can select how many decimal places I want in this case is zero yes I want to use my thousand separator you can see here there's a lot of other form that so that we can do for a number and we'll go through those a little bit later on but for now I've set the decimal place to zero the thousand separator is on with that tick I'm going to click on OK and you can see that to put that in automatically now we want to highlight that this is a total we want to make it bold and we want to put that line in there so it it draws your eye to being the total so I'm going to highlight those group of cells click and hold down highlight them as we go first of all I'm going to make them bold now I'm coming up here and I'm going to click on my bold you can see if you hover over something it gives you a description of what it is and in brackets if there is one there's a keyboard shortcut we'll go through some of these keyboard shortcuts at the end but for now so that's made it bold and you can see it automatically makes it bold and I want to draw a line on that top of those cells so you see over here I've got the option at the moment it's set to bottom border so I click on this drop down box and I can select top border and you'll notice here that that border has actually changed the top so I can go and click somewhere else and click on top border if I click somewhere you can now see that that has in fact put in that line for us all right we want to highlight this as being the income section and we're going to do that by making that bold so again I'm going to click on where I want to make bold I'm going to go up and click on the B to make it bold and these three I want to make it sit on the other side so rather than being left aligned I want it to be right aligned so I'm going to highlight these three and I'm going to click on that alignment and drag it across so we've made that look a little bit prettier we're going to do the same with expenses now there's a trick you can use when you're setting up spreadsheets that once you've formatted part of it you want the exact same formatting to go whether it's the same color or whether it's the way you've done it or the font or whatever we can use what's called the format painter so here I've got this as bold I'm going to come up to my format painter 
click on this, you can see here I've got green dancing ants and I've now got that plus symbol with a paintbrush next to it. So wherever I click next will have the same formatting as that. So I'm going to come down to expenses, click on that, and you can see that it's done it. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to click on my January figure. I'm going to click on my format painter. I'm going to highlight these areas. And again, you can see that's automatically changed the format to the same. Here, first thing I want to do is I want to do my auto sum again. So I select where I want my auto sum. I come up here and Click Auto Sum. Again, it's had a guess. Is these the four that you want to add? In this case, yes, we do. So I just hit Enter, and let's put it in. And I want that to be the same format as, as this one here. So I'm going to click on there, click on my Format Painter, click on that. And you can see it's made it bold. It's put the line in it. Now I'm going to use that Fill Handle again. So I'll come over to that Fill Handle, click and hold drag it across you can see it's brought that formatting across with it and then I can use the format painter to do the same with my heading again now we've made it bold it needs to be a little bit wider I can double click on that and make it that little bit wider these four I want to be right aligned we're now going to do our last section now with these ones, we did the sums because we wanted to add everything up. Here though, our profit is our income less our expenses. So we can't use that sum formula. When it comes to Excel and Mass, they're fairly similar in the way that they think things and do things. Let's just have a quick look. So in Mass, when we go to add something, we use a plus symbol. In Excel, it's exactly the same. For subtraction, it's the minus. Again, maths in Excel is the same. When we divide, when we were in primary school and high school, when we were working out how to multiply and divide, we used the times as an X and the divide as that symbol. In Excel, multiplication is a star and the divide is a slash. It means that we don't get confused with our bits and pieces. Now, if you look at your number pad on your keyboard now, you'll notice that you have an enter in that very bottom right hand corner of the keyboard. Above that is the plus, above that is the minus. Beside that to the left is a star, which is your multiply, and the next one across on the left is the divide. So you don't have to worry about which ones they are. They're all in your numeric pad. So here, normally I'd say my income less my expenses equals my profit. It's exactly what we're going to do here. All formulas start with an equal, so I'm going to type in my equals. I want my total income, so I'm going to click on that cell. Minus click on the expenses again you can see Excel has automatically put them in for us and coded it and then I'm going to hit enter and then you can see it's done the calculation for us all right now with this one it's automatically picked up the formatting as as comma separated but it hasn't made it bold and being the grand total, we probably want to make it stand out a little bit more than just a single line. So first thing we're going to do is make it bold. You want to put a line at the top and a double line down the bottom. Now that's fairly common. We actually have that option, top and double bottom, but we can also come down to where it says more borders and we click on that. And you can see here, I want a single line, and I'm going to click on my top. I want a double line. I'm going to click on my bottom, and it's done that for me. I can do the sides. I can do triples. I can do fix. I can do different colors here. So this is another way to put a border on. So I'm going to click on OK, and if I click away, you can see 
there's that. Again, if I use my fill handle and drag it across, it's going to move it across automatically. Again, that profit we want to match. So I'm going to use the double bottom and single top and the bold. And you can see there, that's done the same thing. So there you go. We've got it ready to go. If we're going to then put that into a PowerPoint presentation or something, that's fantastic. We're ready to go. But we want to print this and send it or fax it to a customer. So we better put um, a header and a footer on it. So this is a little summary of what's going on. It's a really good idea to get in, into, especially in the workforce, where you may have multiple files that you're looking at and you never quite know which one it is. Yes, we have a title here, but we can put some more information there. So when we're printing out and we're looking at a printout of it, we can go back and find it and make sure we've got the right date and the time. And even to the point that if we've got a number of different versions because we're updating them, we can find out which one's the most up to date. So to put in our header and our footer, we come up to insert up the top here. You can see that ribbon has changed now. That's all the insert ribbons and we want to insert a header and a footer all the way over here. So I'm going to click on that. You can see it's changed view and then we've got our header here. So we've got it in three sections, the left, the center and the right. So I'm going to click on the right and I'm going to type in a little message here. I'm going to say Blue Baron's business services. Again, I can highlight that and go back to my home and change the font to whatever I want. Let's make it something fancy because we can. Make it a little bit bigger. We'll make it blue. Now, I want to put some more information down the bottom. So you can see here I've got when these are all grayed out, that means that we can't access them. So the header foot is grayed out, so we can't see it. But we'll notice there's a new tab, and it's green. So if it's a colored tab, it's only ever there while you're in that mode. So header footer mode, we click on that. Click on go to footer. And again, you can see we've got the three options, the left, the center, and the right. On the left-hand side here, I'm going to put in the date and the time. Now we want that to automatically happen whenever we open and print that. So you can see up here, if I come up to the top here, I can have a current time and a current date. So I'm going to click on current date, two spaces with my space bar, and then current time. In the center, I'm going to want to put where I find it. But when I click here, you'll notice that this will update to the actual date and the time. So there you go the date and the time. So here, I want to be able to find this file again. So I want to put both the file path and the file name there. And I'm going to add .xlsx. And you'll see when I do that, it will show the path, it will show the name, exercises, and then the xlsx. And over here, I need to put a page number. In this case, it's only a one page. It doesn't matter. But things that have multiple pages, it's always handy to know. So I'm going to click on, actually, first of all, I'm going to type page and the space. I'm going to click on page number, then of the space, number of pages, and then type in pages. So this will automatically show when I click back over onto the left hand side, you can see page one of one pages. And normally if it's a one page document, you're probably not going to do that. But if it's a multi page document, especially if it's you know more than 10, it's always handy to have what page it is of how many pages. So I'm going to scroll up. So there's my footer, there's my header I've gone and put in. So I'm going to click in the middle here, 
I'm going to come over to my view and I'm going to go back to normal. You can see you can't actually see the header and footer in this view. But if I go to my file and I go to print, I get my print preview view that you can see there. There's my Blue Baron's business services. There's my date and time. There's my file. There's my pages of pages. And I'm now going to save my data. I've updated it. I want to save it. Now, I suggest that you guys do a save as because you've updated your data. You want to keep that original data for your own purposes. So I'm going to go file, save as. Here it's going to offer me where I want it to go. I'm going to put it into E. Well, I want to do it. I'm going to change this to completed exercises. And I'm going to click on save. So now you guys can come back and do this video a number of times and sit there and watch it and listen to it and update that file. And every time you just do a save as and save it as something slightly different, you can go back and do it again. So looks pretty good. Let's go and have a look at exercise two is Beck's Boutique. All right, so in this exercise, we're going to look at a number of different things. First of all, you'll notice that it's going to need to be printed up, but we'll do that near the end. For now, you can see up here, we've got a section at the top, which has a whole lot of information up here. We've got our GST rates, we've got our packaging cost rates, we've got our shipping cost rates, and we've got our margin that we want. The first thing we're going to do is, that looks silly because nobody talks about 0.10 or 0.15 or anything like that. We're going to change that to a percentage. So we're going to come up here, we've highlighted what we want. We're going to click on our percentage. We put it there. You could, of course, we'll do this with the GST. We'll click on the GST. Instead of using this one, we're going to click on our number and come down and use it as a percentage. How many decimal places do we want? In this case, none. So Excel, there's usually at least two ways, if not three, of doing something. Now what this does is when we do all our bits and pieces here, we're going to always bring it back here. Now what that means for a business is that, let's say packaging cost goes up, the boxes that we normally buy to put our hats in have gone up. I, need to, I can change it here in just one spot and it will flow down automatically into all my other formulas. Whereas if I have it hard-coded in or part of a formula is a hard-coded in as part of the formula, it's just going to um, stay there and I'm gonna to have to change it every single time that changes. In this example, we've only got 20 articles. It's not a huge deal, but again, if you're a Bunnings with hundreds of thousands of different products and you have gotta change every single one of them, it's gonna drive you nuts very quickly. So when we're designing spreadsheets, we should design an area on the page or even have a whole separate page which you just put that kind of information in and then everything links back to it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I need to make this a little bit wider. So I'm just going to grab and drag it across so we can see it. And we'll make that a little bit beauty and I'm going to cheat actually I'm going to go back to where we were last time grab that format paste it go into here and paste it there bang done now again that means if you've got other spreadsheets or anything open you want to be consistent you can do that as well all right so here my packaging cost this is a bra so our formulas always begin with an equals I'm going to sit there and click on my D10. Now, what we're going to explore here amongst our formulas is the relative and absolute. Now, if I were to copy this cell, click come up here and click on copy, get my dancing ants, I come down to packaging and I hit paste. Okay. You see it hasn't brought the 10 down because even though it says equal D4 here, what Excel sees is 
put in the value of the cell one, two columns across, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve cells up from me. So when I copy that from here to here, it says two across and twelve up from me. That's nothing. So it's put nothing in. So this is what we call relative addressing. When we put the cell in there, D4, when we move it, it's going to look at the cell in the relative same position. So this one was two across and whatever it was up. So we'll do the same here and it comes up to that one. So we need a way of being able to lock that in. So up here in my formula bar, if I just hit F4, you can see it puts in two dollar symbols or string symbols. Now what that does is it locks it into that cell. So if I hit enter, I now copy this and copy it down to this one. You can see that it's locked into D4, so it's always putting the right one in. And the problem is going to be now when I drag this across to autofill all the packaging, and I want the 5, the 5, the $12.50, it's still saying D4 and still locking it into that D4. It's not picking up the 5, the 5, and the $12.50. So let me just undo those two. So what I want to do, rather than putting the two strings in there, each string locks in that. So this string symbol or dollar symbol is locking in the D, this one is locking in the 4. So for this one I want it always to come up to D4 but when I copy this across or autofill this across I still want it to come to 4 but I want it to go to the next one. So if I hit F4 again you can see it goes through those four options. Nothing, both, locking in just the row locking in just the column. So in this case we want to lock in just the row. Now what that means is when I drag this across it's going to pick up the 10, the 5, the 5, the 12, the 10, the 5, the 5, the 12, 50 like it should and when I copy these and I put it down here okay, it's picked up the correct values again because it's still going to D4 this one's still going to E4 so when we're talking about relative addressing and absolute addressing we're talking about locking in one or both of our parts to make it absolute i.e. it always goes back there so we want to do the same with our shipping obviously here we want it to pick up the 5 this one we want to pick up $2.50 this one the same this one the seven dollars so we want to make sure that we're locking those in but when we drag it down we want it to do it again so I'm going to put an equals click on the cell I want I want to lock in just that row so I'm going to hit F4 until I have just the dollar symbol in front of the row I'm going to hit my enter I can fill that across and I can see that it's picked up the right values and when I copy that down to this one here you can see it's done the same thing alright total costs we want to add those three together so the way we do that would be a sum function so I click where I want to be click on my auto sum it's had a guess, is that the three we want? In this case, yes it is. And I hit my enter. Again, I can drag that across. For my margin, I want to then multiply this by this. Equals, now I always want to multiply it by the one above me. I don't want to lock this cell in. When I copy that down, I want it to do the same thing. I want to take the one above me, but I always want to multiply that by my 17%. So my star is my times, 
I'm going to click on my B10 to lock it in. Now again, I want to lock in the row, not the column. So I'm going to hit my F4 key until such time as I've locked in my row. Now when I hit enter here, in this case it's, it's come up as a fairly round number, but there will be times when it comes out as a number with a lot of decimal places. For these kind of calculations, we want to round that number. Now, there's a number of round functions. This one we're going to use is the just the normal round. So if it ends in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it will round down. If it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it will round up. And then we can tell which decimal place to look at. So what I want to do is I want to make this a round number. So if there's any extra decimal points beyond the sense, I'm going to take it out. So first of all, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to come up to here to my FX, my insert function. And you can see here I've done this recently, so it's in my most recent used. But if it's not there, search for what you want, R-O-U-N-D. Just type it in and go, go. It's going to bring up a whole lot of ones that are similar or what it thinks are similar. So round, round down, round up. There's a few in there. See here, gives you the format and a quick description of what happens. So it rounds a number to a specified number of digits. That's the one we want in this case. So we're going to click on OK. Now asking what number do we want to round? We don't want to round a number, we want to round a formula. So I'm going to click on this little red box beside it. And now I'm going to click on and start my function again. So I wanted that number there multiplied by that number there and I want to lock in the column so I can hit sorry the row so I'm going to hit F4 twice to put the string just in front of the row. I'm going to come back and click on my red arrow here. Number of digits, how many digits do we want it round to? In this case it's two. And we click on OK. So you can see up here, my formula bar, I have equals round, B16, so whatever the one, the number above it is, wherever we copy it to, always coming up to the same column, line 10. And we're going to round it to two decimal places. Again, so that third decimal place is going to look at, if it is a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4, it will round it down. If it is a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, or a 9, it's going to round up. So again, I can now use my fill handle and drag that across. And you can see here, if I click on this one, E16 multiplied by E10 rounded to two decimal places. So now I need my total. I need my total cost plus my margin. So again, I'm going to use that sum function. So I click where I want it to be. I click on my auto sum. Now you see here, it's had a guess. Oh, I want you to add the one above it. Now it hasn't included this one because it can see that that's a formula and involves the other one. So it's assuming that you're want, not wanting to include that. In this case, we do. So I'm going to click and hold and drag so I've got those both. And I'm going to hit enter. And again, I'm going to use my autofill and drag that across. Now again, GST. We need to calculate the GST based on that. All our formulas start with an equals. I want to take this number and multiply it by this number. And now wherever I go in that sheet, I want it to always be that number. So I just hit F4 once and lock it in completely, both the rows and the columns. Now you can see here, six dollars and eight cents and a little bit. So again, I'm going to delete that. We're going to use a round function. What we're not going to do is the normal round function, because the ATO is mean and nasty and it always wants you to round up and pay it as a round up. So we're going to do that. So if it's greater than zero, that in this case, the third decimal place, we want to round it up to the next one. Whereas a round, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 was rounded down, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 was rounded up. 
here I'm going to use the round up formula, which means that if it's greater than the zero, so if it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, it will automatically round it up. So again, I'm going to come up here and click on my FX to insert a function. I'm going to type in up here round up and click on go, and there you go, round up. Okay. Now, what number do we want to round up? Again, we don't want to round up. We want to round the formula up. So we're going to make that formula again. So I'm going to click on my red arrow here. I want that multiplied by that. We always want it coming back to B3. So we're just going to hit F4 once to put the dollar symbols or the string symbols on both the column and the row. I'm going to click on my red arrow here. How many digits? Again, we only want to two. And you can see here, there's the answer to your formula, 6.084. How many digits are we rounding it to? Two. And here's what it's going to come back with, 6.09. So, okay. So again, we can drag that across. And then again, we want to make the final selling price with our total plus our GST. So I click on my auto sum again. Again, it's recognizing this is already part of a formula. It's adding up these two, it's ignored it, but we want to include that. So we click and hold and we remove it to the right area. And we click on enter, we drag that across. So there we go. Now again, we have the problem in that it doesn't look fantastic. Let's go through and quickly format this area. This one here. And then what we can do is we can copy that down. Um, and that will take all our formulas and everything with us. You'll notice that with the exception of that first price, everything is now a formula. So we can take this whole section and just copy it down the whole way. All right. So let's take our item code and our item numbers and we'll make them bold. Our shipping, sorry, our total cost, we'll put a border on the top. The same with our total. The same with our selling price. But we'll also add to our selling price a bottom border. So that looks all right. Now what we can do is we can just highlight these as bold and then if we grab this whole section here and copy and come down here and hit paste you can see that it's put in all our formulas it's put in all our formatting and everything so it's exactly the same with the exception of those two lines that we had to change manually that's all the same now, it's always a good idea when you're doing stuff like this to add it through. So let's go down to the next line. I'm going to paste it again, and then I'm going to check. So our cost is 24. Our packaging is 10, we expected. Our shipping is 5. 24 and 10 and 5 is 39. That is correct. Multiplied by our percentage for margin, which was 17% for memory. Here it is here. So quickly bang that into a calculator, that's correct, 39 uh, and $6.63, yep, so, and then the GST, that is correct as well, so it's all working fine. Now, just when I'm adding that up, I've noticed it's quite hard to add up, the easy, these three, once we got to there, because the format was all a little bit different, here we got no sense, so you're trying to add the nine and the three, that's not correct, you're actually trying to add the nine and the six. So what we might do, is we might make everything two decimal places. Now we're gonna do that, by coming up here, we've highlighted what we wanna do. Come up here, you can see that's an increase, and that's a decrease, so here we wanna click on the increase, and now everything's to two decimal places. And that becomes much easier, way up to 39, plus the 663 makes 4563. So you can see how that layout is important. So again, let's grab that copy, 
click here on our paste you see that's brought it across and again but we haven't got this area the same so again I'm gonna no, let's do this one I'm gonna make this one bold I'm gonna highlight those two lines in format paste and click on there and you'll notice that unlike with the normal copy and paste with format paste as soon as you click somewhere you lose it so you need to click on format paste again and click on it I need to click on format paste again and click down here I need to click on format paste again you can see those dancing ants disappear every time I format paste somewhere whereas if I highlight this section and copy it and bring it down to here and paste it those dancing ants have stayed and I can then paste it somewhere else if you want to get rid of the dancing ants because they're annoying you or you, you want to clear the copy just hit the escape and that gets rid of the dancing ants all right so we've got all that there we'll make this a little bit tidier quickly so we're going to bold that we'll bold our packaging costs and our shipping costs so it looks like you can see we'll bold those two and these as well move those into the middle now down the bottom we've actually got three extras oh we need to make that a bit wider so again I'm going to double click our client has said to us I want you to calculate our prices which we've done and then I want you to work out what the average price is and what our minimum and maximum price is for our different product lines, our bra, our pants, our tops and our hats. Now average, we add up all our prices and divide them by the number. Rather than having to do that ourselves, which we could manually do, we're going to get Excel to do that work for us. Now, we could come up into function and find the function, but it's one of those ones that Excel has seen as the norm. So it's actually in our auto sum. So where we normally click our auto sum to actually get to add it, we click on the drop down box. You can see we've got sum, which we've used before. We've got an average. So I'm gonna click on average. And it's had a guess. What do you want me to average? Now, we don't want you to average that. We wanna average the the selling prices for each so if I scroll up here I'm going to click on my selling price for my first bra scroll down and while I'm holding the control key I'm going to click on this selling price again scroll down I'm going to hold my control key down on the bottom left hand corner of the keyboard and I'm going to click on my selling prices and as we go down and we can see it's every time I click with my control key down, it's adding those to it. If I forget to hold the control key down, you see it doesn't pick it up, it just keeps putting them as singles. So we need to click on it, hold the control key down, move it, control key, hold the control key down every time we click. And that's now going to average those five cells. Now our maximum price and our minimum price, we're going to do the same thing. So up here in my auto sum, I'm going to click on my drop down box. There's a minimum and a maximum formula. So here's my max formula. Again, it's going to have a guess at what we want. It's going to be horribly wrong. We're going to say this one, hold the control key down at this one, this one, this one, and this one. And you see there it's put that in automatically for us and I'm going to hit my enter and here from a minimum same again drop down box pick the minimum it's going to have a guess it's going to be wrong I'm going to click on this one then I'm going to hold my control key down and click on the next few selling prices Again, you can see that's put that in there and I'm going to hit enter now with these three formulas I can highlight the three of them grab my fill box and drag it across you can see 
that's done the same for all our different areas. Now again, let's go through and put our header and footer on this before we actually print it. So let's go up to insert my header and my footer. Now what I'm going to do this time is instead of doing my own, I'm going to select a standard header. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my header and I'm going to select a standard header. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to come up here and can select completed exercises, which you can see is the name of the file. I could have it with the path name or I can just have the name of it. I'm just going to take the name for it from this time. So unfortunately it's thrown us out because it thinks that's all we want to do. I'm going to go back into insert, I'm going to go back into header footer, I'm going to come up here to click on my, and when I'm going to click on my footer, you see here I've got a, a choice of what I want to do. On my footer, I'm going to pick Blue Baron Education, page one and the date. Those commas will mean this is in the left hand side, this is in the centre, this is in the right hand side. And you can see there it is, it's come up. So again, go back to my normal view, it's disappeared. Go file and print for a print preview. And you can see there completed exercises, Blue Baron Education, page one and the date. Now, looking at this, it doesn't look fantastic because it's spread over a number of different pages. This one is only too deep, but there's lots of cases where it ends up being too wide and you're missing the last little bit of your data over here. And when you get a print it, you'll get one page here and then a second page with just one bit of data on it. Or even worse, you're missing just this bit of data and one line here. So when you print it, you get four, one which just has 95% of information one which has a little bit of data here, one which has a little bit of data here, and then one that has nothing. So to stop that from happening, what we want to do is we want to come up to our page layout tab. And we want to come down and click on our page setup. You can see here, we can adjust the size as a percentage, but that can be a little bit of fiddly. Now the best way of doing it is if I click on fit and one page tall and one page wide. If I click on print preview here, you can see it's squashed it all up to make it. You've got to be careful here that you don't make it so small that you can't read it. So sometimes it's better changing your column widths and playing around with some bits and pieces to get it done. One of the handy tricks to know about that one, again I'm in my page layout, I'm going to go to my page setup. I'm going to click on in this one and instead of one page wide and one page tall I want it to be one page wide but I don't care how tall it is and that will happen in the real world of the time when you've got some data you've, you've set it up it's a little bit wider than the page you've changed your margins and you're trying to change your columns and it's just not quite fitting in and it's 10 pages which is five pages plus the five pages with just that little bit on it you want it to become just one page wide you don't care how many pages tall the best way of doing it is just delete that number one and now it will make it one page wide and however many pages tall it needs to be so again if I hit my print preview you can see it's back to two pages wide So now I'm just going to sit there and save this. Now again, there's a number of different ways of doing things in Excel. I can go File and click on Save. You can see up here I've got a little Save icon that I can do. And you can see here it's just giving me a heads up that I can also use the Control S. Control S is one of those beautiful ones. Whenever you are doing anything, if the phone rings or anything else, just quickly hit Control S and save it. Then if something happens while you're away, uh, especially when my kids were young, I used to work from home and be on a laptop and I'd be typing away and doing my bits and pieces. 
something would happen, baby needs to be changed or fed or is eating the dog or whatever it happens to be and I have to go and sort it out. When I came back, oh no, I've run out of battery and I've lost all my work. So if you get in the habit, whenever you go to leave, enter the phone or get distracted in any way, shape or form, control S, that really makes your life a little bit easier and you hopefully won't lose anything. Now, done and dusted, exercise two. So let's have a look at something else. We're going to talk about how Excel works. And it works via what's called bod mass or bid mass, depending on when you went to school. And this is how Excel does its formulas or calculates its formulas. So let's have a look. B stands for brackets. O for orders, so that's your squares and your cubes. D for division, M for multiplication, A for addition, and S for subtraction. Now they're the order that Excel does calculations in. So as an example, you can see down here, we've got five plus 10 times two is the answer going to be 30 or 25? Based on our bod mass, brackets and orders, there isn't any division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. So here we have no division, here's our multiplication, so we need to multiply that first. So 10 times 2 is 20, then we do our addition, that's 5, that makes 25. To show you that works, I'm going to type into Excel. Always start our formulas with an equals 5 plus 10 times 2 comes up with 25. Now, if we wanted it to come up with 30, so we wanted to add the 5 and the 10 together and then multiply it by 2, we can get Excel to do that. And we can do that by moving up to brackets. So as an example, equals, open brackets, 5 plus 10, close brackets, times 2. Now when Excel calculates this, it's going to do the brackets part first. So it's going to add the 5 and the 10, and then it will do the multiplication, and then it will come up with 30. So when you're doing your calculations, A, always manually calculate one or two of those first to make sure that what you are getting the answer out of Excel makes sense. There will be times when it doesn't and it probably comes down to bod mass because you haven't thought it through properly. When in doubt, stick it in a bracket. So for example, equals five plus, now I'm not quite sure, I can't remember what bod mass, I remember that starts with B for brackets. I want this section to go first. So I'm gonna put it in brackets. The fact that Excel would have calculated first makes no difference to Excel. It will still calculate it in the same order. So when in doubt, what you want to make sure is calculated first, always put in your brackets. And as you get into more and more complex formulas, you can add in more and more brackets. So you can have a bracket within a bracket and all that kind of stuff. So remember, bod mass, brackets, orders, divisions, multiplication, addition and subtraction and as we can see here depending if you go left to right or you use bod mass makes a difference in what you come up with so always when you're writing in formulas always make sure you go through and calculate it beforehand so you're making sure that you get what you're expected once you've tested it then you can use your auto fill or your copy and paste and you paste your formulas wherever you want and you're going from there so bod mass, very important when it comes to Excel because that's how it calculates. Now, if you're going to put it in wrong and it's my pay that you're giving me an extra $50 a week, fantastic. But if it means that you're ripping me off $100 a week, certainly want to know about it. And the same happens in a lot of workplaces. People get it wrong, they don't check it. Suddenly you find out a little bit later on, oh, we've been calculating this wrong, we've been forecasting our sales wrong, or we've been looking at our demand incorrectly because we had a formula wrong. Unfortunately, it happens a lot in the real world. So 
but always when you're doing Excel spreadsheets, make sure you double check and you go through and have a look at it. Now the last thing I'm going to touch on very quickly is our keyboard shortcuts. Now we talked about a couple already. Control S was save. Control P, these ones are all their name goes with their letter, so that's going to be print, B, I, and U, bold, italics, and underline. So some of them make sense, S for save, P for print. But of course, we ran out of letters pretty quickly. So not all of them go. Microsoft said, all right, we've got copy, cut, and paste, the three together, and two of them start with C. So we obviously, we can't use C for both copy and, pay and cut. So what do we do? And we can't use the P for paste because we've already got it for print. So what they did is they looked at where the C was on the keyboard and they go, aha, those three are interlaced or interlinked. So if the C's down there, we've got the X on one side, we've got the V on the other side. So we'll make the C the copy, V the paste, and X the cast. And when you can't remember what these two, which one's which, think of it like this. Your scissors that you use to cut look like an X. You can see there, they look like the X. So that's how you remember the X is the cut, and the C is the copy. Oh, and paste with an E Allen. Now, they said, what else are you going to do a lot of? And if you like me, you're going to get things wrong a lot, and you want to undo them. So they said, well, we'll make Z the undo then. So with your left hand, you've always got your Control Z, undo, cut, copy, and paste, all in that bottom corner. Now, these work across all the Microsoft packages. The one that's really handy to know, and keep in the back of your mind, especially if you're working on other people's spreadsheets, and they've given it to you in the workforce, and you're trying to understand it, and you're trying to find out where it goes. If you're trying to find something and it's, it's pages away or it's right down the very bottom, you can use Control G, which is your go-to. So Control key comes up and says, where do you want to go? And you say, oh, I want to go to sell x256 and it'll take you down there so that's an easy way of jumping around your spreadsheet from time to time rather than having to scroll up and down or use your page up and down buttons uh, trying to get somewhere if you're looking at a formula i don't understand what that is i need to look at that yes i'll do that i'll use the control g go to so that's a i'd like to say quick look but it's, you know it's a little bit over an hour um look at excel and this should give you enough information that you can start designing and doing your own basic spreadsheets. So this has been a Blue Baron Education production. Have a look. We'll put an Excel 2 up at some stage. We'll probably put a, a Word 1 up as well for you guys just to give you a little bit of help, especially those, who are, those of you who are students and you need to do this for... Um, as a basic exercise in one of your classes. Words are always handy because you need to be able to do that to do your, your normal assignments. So things like title pages and whatnot, we'll have a look at that. So have a look at all my other files. Have a look at some of the accounting stuff if you're an accounting student. And we'll see you on the flip side. Thank you.